Hello and welcome to Take Refuge 3D. Welcome back. And if you're new here, then welcome. Now, you've probably been modeling in plasticity without realizing some basic quality of life features even exist. Plasticity is pretty good when it comes to suggested commands and context options. Like down here, you know, when you select something, it shows you the different buttons you can press um, and, and what they will do. Um, but some stuff's just plain hidden and it's undocumented because the documentation is still a work in progress. Um, so you might be wondering things like, why can't I select what I'm clicking on? Or why does the delete key just not delete what I want it to delete? Now, plasticity is fast, it's clean, and in my opinion, it's the best hard surface tool for artists and designers. But some of its best tricks are kind of hidden in plain sight. So in this video, I'm going to show you a few small things that if you don't already know, can seriously level up your workflow, and it's stuff that I wish that I knew sooner. Now, before we get into it, I'm a Plasticity affiliate, and if you're thinking about buying Plasticity or coming to the end of your free trial, you can get a 10% discount on any Plasticity license with the code REFUGE10, and you get a discount and the channel gets a small commission. Also, you can check out some of my products on Gumroad, like the Radial Menu Builder for Plasticity, uh, the Infinite Matcap Generator, and my most popular asset uh, is a plugin for Blender called Angon Pro, which um, basically automatically optimizes uh, CAD-based and Boolean-based uh, assets for texturing software and game engines. Now, let's get into it. So. Let's go into front mode, pressing one on our numpad. So the first thing I want to show you, uh, number one, is cutting a solid with a curve automatically selects the part of the cut object depending on which direction you draw the curve. So when you draw a curve in plasticity, it under the hood has a start and an end point. So we started the curve here and we ended it here. So depending on which direction, you bring the curve across right so if we go and cut this object because we went left to right okay and then when we select that it automatically selects the curve and the top part of the object allowing us to quickly press x or delete to delete the object conversely if we do that right to left okay and then cut the object you'll notice that the bottom part is there for easy deletion okay so um, this works with other types of curves as well so we can take a spline curve okay so we've gone left to right in this case and this part gets selected as you can see here by the yellow outline um, so we can quickly delete that and that's done okay and same again if we did that same spline curve and we went right to left Right, very similar curve, the bottom part gets selected. So in short, left to right, upper section gets auto-selected, and right to left, the lower section gets auto-selected. Now this lets you delete one side quickly, or do a quick and dirty Boolean operation without having to create another solid. Now, if you like the content on my channel, Please consider liking and subscribing, and if you don't want to miss out, hit the bell notification. Also, once you've watched this video, let me know in the comments of any other features in plasticity that aren't very obvious, um, and maybe I'll do a follow-up. Now, another one of the ones that is based on right to left and left to right is selection. So, if you left click and drag, you'll get a marquee, and you'll notice if you go left to right, it's pink, it's this color. And if we go right to left, it's orange. So if you've got a pink one or an orange one, or it might be a different color if you've got your settings set up differently. So if I start to pull this across left to right, it only selects the objects that are fully encompassed. Actually, we need to be in solid mode. So it only selects the objects that are fully encompassed by the marquee, allowing you to quickly grab them and move them around. And if we go right to left, it selects anything it touches which allows you to then grab those things so this allows you to quickly like say just only want to grab these and just move them up boom all right so and then if you wanted to grab the whole of everything you could go like that 
And this can get really handy when you're just trying to, especially if you're just trying to grab certain edges and you just want those edges selected. Um, you can select the whole edge, whereas if we did it this way, we can only select these edges or let's say faces. Okay, so those are the only ones that are fully encompassed. Now we can move this around. Okay, so this is super handy in a variety of different scenarios. Um, but that's how it works. So in this case, left to right, only selecting the encompassed objects. All right. Or in this case, we could do um, only selecting the encompassed uh, curves and we can move those around like that. So we could actually move this whole, we can move our whole buttons, including the sockets around. All right. Um, so that's pretty cool. So while we're on the topic of selecting objects, have you ever tried to select something? Let's just go into solid mode. Have you ever tried to select something, but you wanted to also select the object behind? Obviously you could use this other trick that we showed before, but this is um, not gonna work in every case. And sometimes you'll end up hiding an object so you can go and select the objects behind. Um, but what you can actually do, and it can be a little bit tricky, you gotta make sure you don't move your mouse, but you can, hold down left click and then scroll your mouse wheel and it will scroll through all the objects. As you can see, the different objects are getting highlighted. Okay, what's important about this one though is it's based on where the mouse cursor is when you hold down left click. So if I move it around, um, it's gonna start using the marquee. So if, for example, we can take these keys here and I can start to scroll through them like so. Right, so I could select something like that. Um, or perhaps I just wanted to select, um, what's another good example? Maybe there was something hidden behind here. And now I can select those there as well. Okay, so that's just a really handy little trick to be able to select objects without having to hide and move things around. Um, you can quickly toggle between overlapping parts like stacked faces or nested solids and um, you can select hidden and obscured geometry without changing view or hiding objects. Now, another thing to talk about is delete. So let's just hide this um, object for now. Okay, and we'll just bring out a cube in the center. All right. So the delete button or the X button, they both do the same thing. Do different things based on the context. So if we're in solid mode, the solid and you press X, it simply deletes the whole object. Okay, if you've got redundant topology like this, okay, and you're selecting these edges, you can simply delete or dissolve in this case the, the edges in face mode and you want to delete a face it does nothing so we can't dissolve that face because it can't heal the wound however if we take a chamfer right we can now dissolve those edges like that so we can also press shift and X to delete the faces entirely. And this allows, this is super powerful, but that it will dissolve or delete depending on what you've got. So if we've got, um, fillets, it's going to dissolve the whole edge, right? Um, and if we've got those, it's going to just do that with Shift X. So, um, and it, it will never dissolve edges that it requires. So in this case, it seems to require that edge, but not that one for whatever reason. Okay, so it's going to start to have strange behavior um, in certain instances where you're trying to do something that it's not designed to do. But this allows you to do some pretty cool stuff like... Um, like I just showed you before, if we champ for these and then we just dissolve only 
these edges, it's kind of like we've beveled a vertex, right? And then we can do something like that. And then you can do an X nerbs or a patch. on there okay and then we can just join that in and then you've got this cool little blend here so i think those are like some tips that are kind of hidden um in plasticity and i hope that was helpful but as a bonus um there's a couple of new features that you might have missed out on so most tools have context options so example if i select this face or if i select this edge it's going to have context options down there and if we want to uh, perform a command, we've always been able to select F and search for it. And we can add things to our favorites up here as well. But Shift F now brings up um, some suggested commands. So this is like a kind of curated selection of commands that you might want to do. So let's say we go into X-ray mode and we just want to um, select hollow. We can now make this a hollow object which if we now do a section analysis on this, we can see that we, we now have a hollow object. So that's um, really cool that those are just there for you there. Um, and another feature which is not hidden, but is a new feature and is super powerful is we can now define the pivot. pivot. So if we press G and then we press V for pivot we can select the pivot now we've always been able to do this but now we can select whether we want it to be the bounding box okay the median or the active and if, if we select active it's going to remember that pivot so now if we want to rotate it it's rotating on that pivot and this is really great for things with moving parts such as um, this boom box because I've set the pivot and that is now pivoting around there. Uh, this pivots where it should as well. So um, yeah, those are handy features, especially for stuff that's gonna have moving parts. So if I'm rotating this, I'm not having to manually set a pivot every time, it's just remembered it. So that is super handy um, in my opinion. So that's it for this one, guys. I hope that you got something out of it and I shall see you all in the next one. Tschüss.